Hey, all right, guys. Thank you very much for joining the training. Uh, who have we got? Oh, I've got a few people there. Good to see you, Rachel. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> hey, Garth. Nice to see you. Uh, who else we got? A few other ones. All right, well, uh, thank you so much for joining everyone. I know your time is precious, so I'm not gonna take long, but I wanted to take you through this really cool tool that, uh, that I've been sending out to everyone, and it's our, our homepage audit checklist. Now, for those of you that aren't already in our community, this is something that we do in our elite team, and it's something we do in the boot camp, and it's something that I do when I'm looking at stores. I have a bit of a checklist to understand whether or not we've got our homepage set up correctly. And the homepage is super important because that's the first thing that people see, and it's the first impression that people get of your store. So it's a bit like when you're walking through a mall or something like that, you walk past the shops and the window is the thing that attracts you to going in. So imagine looking at a window and it was unappealing, you're not gonna go in. We wanna think about your homepage in a similar vein. We wanna look at it and say, hey, uh, does this store look like somewhere that I wanna pursue? Is it something that interests me? Is it my vibe? Does it have the things that I want? That's effectively what your homepage does. So to make it easy for you guys, this checklist is basically a step-by-step -step thing to see whether or not you have these things on your homepage. And what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna take you through the list one by one. I'm gonna show you some examples on my store, on some big stores, some other stores, bigger stores, all those sorts of things. So you can sort of get a vibe for what we're trying to do. But really the goal of this is making sure that you have a homepage that converts and has all the things that you want on it. All right, well, let's get cracking. Now, uh, if you haven't downloaded this spreadsheet, <laughs> spreadsheet, if you haven't downloaded this checklist, uh, there's a link down below, grab it uh, and follow along at home, print it out, write on your iPad, whatever it is, uh, but we'll go through it together. So basically we're gonna go sort of from top to bottom of the homepage. So if we look at uh, this spreadsheet, I keep, <laughs> I keep saying spreadsheet, I mean uh, checklist, so I apologize if I uh, get my, my words messed up. I, I think I've been working in spreadsheets too much today. All right, anyway. Uh, so the homepage audit checklist, we, we go through a couple of things. The first thing we look at is the announcement bar. Now the announcement bar is like the thing that you want people to see. It's the big announcement that you want to be across every single page. I'll give you an example on a couple of stores here. So this is a high smile. Uh, these guys sell teeth whitening and looks like toothpaste and bits and pieces. But this part up here is the announcement bar right at the top here. So that's it there. We have a look on my store. We've got an announcement bar here. We have a look on Kylie Cosmetics. Do they have one? Uh, yep, they've got one up there, and then boom, we've got one up there. It's basically a message that you want to show to people, uh, that you want everyone to know about, okay? It's, it's, it's an announcement that is applies to the entire website. Usually we use this for sales, you know, for free shipping, brand messaging, something that we just want every single person to know about, all right? So that's the first thing we need to make sure we have in our store, is a announcement bar. We want to make sure it's clearly visible. Now the key here is we want to make sure it's a single line right, so it doesn't take up too much space. Sometimes I've seen announcement bars that have been five lines or something, and it takes up half the page. We want it to be a single line. The only caveat to that is sometimes on mobile, uh, it might go to two lines because it, it shrinks down a little bit, but we don't want it to be any more than two lines on mobile, one line on desktop, that is mandatory. Uh, the final thing is we wanna say, have effective use and highlight important CTAs or announcements. So this is called an announcement bar because it's an announcement we want to make. So often we'll put in like a sale message, uh, we might put in some sort of free shipping, some offer, something in there that we really want to stand out and we want to give it a clear call to action. And what I mean by that is something that's clickable, either a link or you can click the entire bar itself. Every page, I'll say that again, every home page needs to have an announcement bar. So that's the first thing. So then as we scroll down our page, we then go into the main banner image. Now this is the important bit. This is effectively like the poster in the window of a retail outlet. This needs to be able to encourage someone to want to go to the next step. So we want to make the homepage banner, it needs to be positioned above the fold. And what we mean by that is that people shouldn't need to scroll down to see it, okay? The second thing is it needs to focus on a product or a category, it needs to be really specific with a prominent CTA or call to action button. And we need to have clear, high quality imagery. Let me give you some examples. If we look at Boom by Cindy Joseph, uh, really, really great high converting store, we can see pretty clear call to action, 15% off Boom Silk or Boom Silk Gold. You know as soon as you click this where you're gonna go. Now these guys don't have one call to action, the whole thing is a click through, so that's awesome. Uh, let's have a look at Kylie Cosmetics. Uh, the scent of summer, a sweet and sophisticated scent, discover cosmic Kylie Jenner, perfect for summer days and nights. We have a beautiful high definition image here and we know where we're gonna go when we click that. Uh, let's have a look at High Smile. Uh, cool down with Ice Pop so we can tell what they're selling here. Big image here, shop Ice Pop. 
So we can see there we have a really clear banner that has a clear call to action to a product or a collection. Now the mistake that some people make here is they make it really generic and they make it about their brand. And they'd be like, you're the only store for sustainable products. That's too generic. This homepage banner needs to be something that drives people to the next page. So we wanna, our goal is to get someone from the homepage to the next page and the homepage banner is the place that we wanna do it, all right? Cool, hopefully uh, you're getting what I'm putting down. If you wanna write uh, comments down below for those that are on the live call, uh, drop some comments down below. We'd love to hear if you're loving what we're, what we're teaching here. All right, so let's move to the next part, which is our UVP or a unique value proposition. Now, the unique value proposition is super important because it helps your customers understand what makes you different, what makes you stand out, and why should they choose you? Like, what is the uniqueness of you, right? If they're choosing between you and someone else, what is it about you that makes you more uh, desirable than the competitor that they're looking at? This is your unique value proposition, and we need to show this really clearly and powerfully on our home pages. So if we think about that, we need to make sure we clearly explain what makes your products or your brand unique, uh, what differentiates you from your competitors, and we then need to think of emotively speaks to your customers from the brand voice perspective. Now we always say this in the e-commerce academy that people buy from people they trust, okay? And people they resonate with and people they like. So we wanna make sure we have a brand voice and we talk in the language that our customers also talk in. And that's not necessarily like the actual language, but it's more about the types of language they use, okay? So let's have a look at some of the examples here and see what people say. So I might jump over to Boom. Let's have a look here. So Boom is a makeup and skincare brand for the older older lady. Uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, yeah, so mature, look at this. They call them out straight away. Mature skin science. We are committed to creating organic, high-performance, multifunctional beauty. So this is organic. It's a unique value proposition. High-performance means it works. It's multifunctional. Here they're call outs, natural ingredients, easy to use, designed for mature skin and cruelty free. Okay, so this really lands their unique value propositions. Let's see if they say, uh, we don't have anywhere else on that one. Let's have a look at High Smile, see if these other guys have got any. Um, not really, they talk about the experts in smile care, nothing there that's really UVP. Let's jump into my store. So on my store, we definitely have it at the bottom. We talk about, okay, these are our UVPs, a little bit different, not as emotive. So free delivery over $200, happiness guarantee, basically don't like it, no worries, best service in town, price match promise. So they're a unique value proposition. You get free delivery, if you don't like it, you can send it back. Uh, we have some amazing service and you know we have the price match promise. So if you get a product that is, if you see someone that's more expensive, we'll match the price, all right? So it gives you sort of that unique value proposition element there. So let's jump back to the homepage audit checklist. Hopefully this is very helpful for you guys. So the next thing we wanna go down is we need website reviews. Now, these are not just so reviews about your website, but they're also reviews about your brand and your product and things like that. So let's have a look at that. This gives you a chance to sort of showcase people that buy from you and all the things that are great about you because people aren't gonna buy from, well, they might buy from a new brand, but they usually buy when other people uh, say that it's a good place to buy from, okay? So they trust others more than the brand themselves. This is why Amazon has so many reviews because they know that putting reviews on products gets people to buy because people trust if other people are buying. We're all sheep, right? If other people are doing it, we're gonna do it. So let's have a look at that. We wanna make sure that reviews are active on your homepage, okay? You wanna display star ratings wherever possible. If you've got testimonials, display your testimonials. Uh, and we wanna effectively showcase some sort of business reputation. This is the proof element of things. Let's have a bit of a look over on some of these stores here. So I might go to Boom by Cindy Joseph. Uh, let's have another look at this one. So we can see, no, no reviews here. Ah, here we go, we've got stars along here. So this, this gives some proof. Uh, what else have we got? Um, here we've got testimonials. I've tried so many other brands and products, keep coming back to Boom. Um, so they've got a few pieces of social proof there. Let's have a look at some other ones. Let's look at, uh, True Classic is a great brand. Let's see if these guys do it. Okay, they do it front and center. 150,000 reviews trusted by 4 million customers. If that's not social proof, I don't know what is. All right, so that is front and center. Okay, let's have a look what else we've got in terms of a proof element here. Um, okay, customer love, best t-shirts and best customer service. And this is all still on the homepage. Uh, here's the unique value propositions, perfect fit, fair price, premium quality, ultra soft. Here's a big testimonial, plus they've got icons 
uh, or brand icons from places that have talked about them. So this is all the social proof element, guys. So if we think about what we're doing here is we're showing people what we sell and we're telling them why to buy from us and we're telling them other people buy from us and other people uh, recommend us. That's what this social proof element is there. All right, let's go into the next section here. So this is the tech section. This is a bit of a technical thing to uh, for SEO. So we wanna make sure our tech section has uh, relevant SEO keywords, it communicates in a brand voice, and it effectively educates about your brand and or products, okay? Now, I typically see this in smaller stores and stores that are trying to gain authority because if you've already got a brand that people know about, it's less important. But if you don't have a brand that people know about, these text areas are really, really important because what it means is when Google takes a copy of your store, they take a copy of that one page and they know instantly what that page is about if you've got this text section in there. And I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, I definitely know we've got it on our store. So we have this element here. This is our text element. And we now know by having this heading here, Muay Thai MMA, fight gear store online that Google will instantly know what this page is about and we talk about it here. Okay, so this is the text element and we also have another one here, okay? So that basically means that when Google looks at our site and knows who, who how to rank us and knows what we should be ranking for. Now, I haven't seen this as much on bigger stores purely because they are already ranking, they have authority externally, but let's have a bit of a look and see if we, if we can see it. Uh, true Classic doesn't really have it. Boom, doesn't really have it. <laughs> uh, I don't think Kylie Cosmetics does much SEO, so I don't think she's gonna have it. No, no, High Smile used to have it. So it's definitely one of those ones, if you're really trying to rank in, in SEO, a really good SEO uh, factor. All right, let's keep going down the page. So now we've got social proof. We talked about the social proof from a reviews perspective, but now let's talk about it from a content perspective. So the first one that we like to think about is UGC content, and that stands for user-generated content content, UGC, <laughs> user-generated content. So that means that we have people, uh, whether they're models, whether they're customers, whether they're just us doing it ourselves, content of your product in use and with someone and a person in front of it. That is, they're super powerful because then people can relate to that person, they can see it in use, and they have more, they're more likely to buy it. Okay, so that's that one. We wanna to link to our social media so people can check out what we're doing out in the world. And then we wanna showcase products being used by customers in real life. So that's sort of what this is. So these can either be photos or they can be videos or something like that. Let's have a quick look at some examples of, of how we might do this. So definitely no high smile do a lot of this. So we can see we've got a customer there. It's not a customer, that is a Kim Kardashian. So that might be next level UGC. Let's go to something a little bit more relatable. Let's go to Boom. Um, all right, because we can't all get Kim Kardashian. Now, I knew Boom used to have it. Maybe they've got it more on um, a product page. Yeah, they use it a lot in um, in their product pages there. Okay, Boom's not the one. Let's have a look at Kylie. Okay, yeah, Kylie definitely uses it. This is a good one here, actually. So shop our IG. So we can see here we've got um, their Instagram with people using their products. Uh, we've got it there. Let's see if True Classic does it. They definitely used to. Okay, well, it's definitely a hard one. Oh, here we go. There's probably a bit more. So we can see if we click over here on High Smile, we can now start to see, uh, apart from, we don't all get Kim Kardashian. Yeah, here we go. We're starting to see more and more user-generated content. Okay. Now, a lot of these bigger brands, yeah, here's a great example. Uh, user generated content. A lot of these bigger brands um, tend to use like professional models, but we can use creators to do this for us. And you'll definitely notice that uh, smaller brands love this because it means that they can relate to it. And having UGC or maybe just pulling in a feed from your Instagram of your own content is a nice way to show that you're real, the product is real, and it gets uh, other people are using it. All right, so that's a good way about UGC. All right, and then the final piece of the puzzle is your footer navigation links. So at the bottom, we wanna make sure we've got clear navigation links in the footer because this allows the user to continue browsing different products and categories. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So imagine you're browsing this store here and you go right to the bottom. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna see this sort of a thing here. These are all our follow on links. Now these obviously go across all pages, but they're super important to have on our homepage because we don't want people to have to scroll all the way back up to get up here. You know, this has a sticky menu. Let's find if we've got a, a site that doesn't. So this site doesn't have a sticky menu, but at the bottom, if I want to shop makeup, skincare, haircare, it's going to get us there straight away. OK, 
podcast, we want to make sure that we have at least our top level categories here in our shop. All right. Uh, let's see if we've got some other examples. Kylie Cosmetics. Um, she doesn't have it. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. That's not a big deal. Let's see if High Smile has it. Yeah. So High Smile has Vior products and they've got their top products in there. Let's have a look at True Classic. Oh, I've already seen that one. Okay. Cool. So that's sort of the basic outline of a homepage audit that we do. We want to make sure that uh, are we, do we have an announcement bar that's clear that doesn't take up too much of your page? Do we have a banner that drives someone to the next part of their journey, takes them from the homepage to sort of the aisle or the product page? Are we showing proof on what we have there that it's right? Uh, sometimes we even like to show some collections there as well. That's always really good. Um, then do we have sections where we show reviews and testimonials and social proof? Do we have our SEO elements in play? Do we make sure we've got the text in there? And then do we have links that let people go, if they scroll all the way to the bottom, it takes them to where we want them to get to. So the goal of the homepage, as I said before, is to take someone from looking in the window, getting them through the front door, getting them to the aisle to take the thing off the, off the rack to get to the checkout, okay? So the homepage is your entry into your store. So it has to be appealing and it has to drive them down that way. All right, team, I don't think that was too long a meeting, Let me or too long a training, oh, 17 minutes, but that's okay. Uh, hopefully you guys got a lot out of it. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone that's put the comments in there. Uh, yeah, hopefully you can do a bit of an audit on your homepage and find a few things here that you can add into it to try and get those customers from, from the front door all the way through to the aisle. Over and out, team. Catch you later.